Okay, now we are the class selector. We are used to, we're not used to, but we have been practicing already a lot how to select a particular element using the tag. So if I want to select, for example, let's say that I have an anchor here and the anchor is going to take me over to google.com. We're going to have to put the HTTPS. Okay, so if we have a link on our website that says hello world. Sorry, I put it in the wrong place. Okay. If we run this, you're going to see that the link by nature comes with a particular style. It's blue, it has an underline. So if you want to select all anchors, you do like this. You say A, I'm going to make A with a color. I want to make it color purple. There you go. And then when I run it, I'm changing not only that anchor. Well, it's not a very different color. Let me put a different one. Let's put something more yellowish. So let's just say yellow. Okay. You can see that it's yellow now. And if I have many anchors in my website, it doesn't matter how many, all of them will have that same style that I apply to all the anchors. But what if I want to apply only a style to one particular element? So you have one option that it's called the ID like this, and you can say, this is my first anchor. And I can say, I want my first anchor to be let's say with a different background let's make it red or tomato when you run it you'll see that the first one has a background red but the other ones don't because the other ones are being selected with the uh, the they it doesn't have the the pound the pound symbol here the hash it represents an ID so whatever I put in the ID so it has to match exactly this with the other type of selector when you don't put when you don't put anything you don't put a, a pound you don't put a dot you don't put any of that it will still be it will select all the tags basically all the anchors well in this one in particular we're talking about the class selector it's a different one classes are meant for several of them so let's say that i want to have a class that it's called uh let's say magenta and then i'm gonna put background magenta to a lot of them so the good news is that i can do that by applying a class so my class this will will have magenta and then this one will have magenta as well so now i have two elements with a magenta background you see but also i can even play with many classes so i can have a second class that i'm gonna call um underline And this one will have a text decoration node. When you put the text decoration node, the underlining property, like the order line effect, will not affect anymore. So I can I, I can say that this one, well, actually it would be not underlined, right? Yeah. So not underlined. This is gonna be magenta and also not underlined. So I can apply two classes if I separate them by a space. I can actually apply three, four, five, as many classes as, as I want. But you'll see how cool this is because when you when you compile now, this one doesn't have the underline. Let me make it bigger so you can see it. This one is is yellow with a magenta background, but it, it has an underline. This one doesn't has it. So this exercise is asking us to apply the class small to these two to these two p tags. So class small. I'm going to remove all the other stuff that I created because we don't need it. And then when I, it says, note any HTML tag with a glass small will have a font size of nine pixels. Yeah. So this should have a font size of nine pixels and it doesn't. So let's see what mistakes, what mistakes could I have made? All oh, right. I forgot to add the actual class into the CSS. So as you can see now, right now they have a, a, a size. If we want to look at the size, you can, you can right click on the element, inspect, and then it will open several tabs, like the source tab, the console tab, you can click on the elements tab, and then 
you can hover on the elements or you can use this arrow and click on them and it will tell you what properties are being applied to them in the computed tab. So here you can see that it has a font size of, it doesn't really say. So it's the default font size for any P tag, I guess. But if, if I refresh, if I build again, you will say how now you will see how now they're bigger, smaller, you see, smaller. And if I right click and inspect again, you can see the styles being applied to them. Look, font size nine pixels because there was a small class. This is super cool, the inspector. This is something that you need to use. Actually, developers, front end developers, like they code here. Like, you know, they add more things. For example, I could put here that I want to also have a letter spacing of 20 pixels. So now that you see how it's immediate, the change is immediate. So I, I apply the styles here live. And then after they work, I just bring them back to my actual code because it's not here. Whatever I do on the inspector, it doesn't include, it's not included in my CSS until I actually move it manually. So that's pretty much it.